everyone so we are here again with our second bake along and i'm sure you're all prepped up for the day so today we are baking together a savory loaf and uh, i'll be using whole wheat flour in the recipe to incorporate a lot of nutrition and then i'm using lots of green and lots of seasonal vegetables but keeping in mind the lockdown constraints if the following vegetables are not available at your house so you can always swap it with whatever is handy or whatever is there in the fridge and uh, then uh, we'll be using uh, lots of cheese and butter also in the recipe to make it a little more interesting for the kids then chicken lovers can always add on to chicken and then cottage cheese i mean uh, it all depends on your preferences and your availability so that's it let's have a quick look at the requirements for today's recipe of savory masala loaf, we would be needing 2 cups of whole wheat flour, 1 cup semolina, 1 cup of milk, 1 fourth cup of oil, 1 fourth cup of melted butter, half cup of curd, 1 and a half teaspoon salt, 1 tablespoon baking powder, some cheddar cheese essence for the filling we would be needing some poppy seeds chopped garlic chopped green chili some cheddar cheese I was finished with my uh, stock of cheddar cheese so I've replaced it with some slices of processed cheese some chopped spinach chopped mushrooms chopped capsicum and chopped onion. So we start with the preparation for the filling. We put our pan, put about one tablespoon of oil. And one tablespoon of melted butter. We put some chopped garlic Some chopped green chilli We should not overcook the garlic should remain white because the flavor should not die it should not be overcooked you follow it with some chopped onions you can put vegetables of your choice like some people are allergic to mushrooms so they can always replace mushroom with some corns or chicken lovers can always have chicken for that you have to marinate the chicken ahead and uh, keep it for 3-4 hours with some ginger garlic paste and some salt, red chili powder, some coriander powder and about 1 teaspoon of lemon juice. Marinate the chicken ahead and you can add it with the vegetables when you are sauteing it. Once the onion is slightly done, we'll add the chopped spinach. You can add carrots, you can add green peas, you can add uh, cheese or paneer, whatever. I mean, uh, the vegetables can be anything of your choice. Once the onion is slightly tender, we don't have to overcook the vegetables, we just have to saute it. Now 
Now we'll add the spinach. Onion is slightly cooked now. It's time to add the chopped spinach. There goes the spinach. And you have to cook until it becomes slightly soft. And blends with the onion. We can add some more spinach. You can take a bunch of spinach. This is my farm fresh spinach from my own garden. So it is really, really fresh. You can see the color. So now that the spinach has become slightly tender, we will add the mushrooms in it and the capsicum. So we we'll cook until it's all done and blends well. The mushrooms are also tender and cooked well. And it blends well with the greens and the, you can put the flame on a little high because it should not get too soggy. Wow, the aroma is already so captivating and to die for. I just love the combination of corn, spinach with mushrooms. I was not having corn in my stock, otherwise we could have added some corn also. So vegetables are entirely your choice. You can have your own take on the vegetables. Whatever combination you prefer. You just wait for the water to evaporate. And once the veggies come together, we will be almost done with it. And this time we will add salt. So we will add about 1 teaspoon of salt. Salt you can uh, have as per your taste. You can have one, two, one, four, one plus one, four teaspoon of salt. Or a little lesser if you prefer to have. So another one minute and this filling is done. You should see that uh, there doesn't remain too much of water. Water should dry up. So the veggies are almost done. So we switch off. We'll switch this off and we'll move to prepare, preparing the batter. So we proceed uh, with adding all the wet ingredients in a bowl. We will put together half cup of curd. One fourth cup of oil. One fourth cup of melted butter.
and one cup of milk. We'll whisk it all well. Once it's all mixed, it comes together. We'll put the semolina. We'll add the semolina. This is one cup of semolina. Mix it and let it sit for about two three minutes before we proceed further so in the meantime in another bowl we'll add the whole wheat flour one tablespoon of baking soda or oh, sorry baking powder this is one tablespoon of baking powder and to this we'll add a one and a half teaspoon of salt. We'll just sieve it. So if you want you can use all purpose flour instead of whole wheat flour. This is two cups of whole wheat flour, one tablespoon of baking powder and one and a half teaspoon of salt. So it's all mixed up well now. Now we'll go back to our wet mixture. So we come back to our wet mixture we'll add some a few drops of cheddar cheese you can skip this if you don't have a cheddar cheese essence but the essence really uh, enhances the flavor it adds so much to the aroma of the final thing so we'll gradually add uh, the flour mixture to it you have to mix it very gently uh, you should not over mix At this point, if you feel that you need to add a little more milk, you can go ahead. If you feel that the mixture is getting a little too dry, so you can add some more milk in this. So this is all folded in well now, there are no lumps in this, we will add the vegetables in this, the filling which we had prepared that will go into it. And this is now done. We'll put it in our loaf tin 
and this will now go in the oven. So we'll grease our uh, loaf pan. This is my seven by three uh, loaf pan. Uh, it's better to go for a nine by four, a bigger one. So we'll grease it well. Now that our loaf tin is greased, we'll turn the bat turn over the batter in this. We'll smoothen the top. So this uh, quantity of batter will make about two loaves of uh, this tin size. That is a uh, seven by three. If you're using a bigger loaf pan, then the entire batter can go in one pan. There you go. You can smoothen the top with the back of a spoon. And uh, just brush some butter on the top. And sprinkle some poppy seed. And our cheese slices. If I had my cheddar cheese, I would have grated some cheese. You can go about with any choice of the topping. You can uh, put some Slices of tomato or some oregano crushed or some jalapenos. It's entirely up to you. Some uh, crisp uh, sauteed uh, garlic and onion. I mean whatever. You can have your own choices with the topping. So this is it. We will now put it in an oven at 170 degree for about uh, 30 to 35 minutes so that's our cheesy masala loaf freshly out of the oven we'll cool it a bit before we cut it into slices So that was our savory masala loaf, brimful and bursting with all your favorite vegetables and cheese. I hope you all enjoyed baking it along with me and of course a hot slice of this loaf and your favorite soup and your dinner is sorted at least for today. So see you all soon guys uh, with some uh, exciting recipe again in our next bake along. Till then, ciao!